Thank you for joining us today. You can tell we're not in our typical studio, but here, here we are. Uh, I, we've got cameras. We've got all kinds of stuff going on all around us. Dr. John, hey, how are you here. doing? It's it's weird not to be in our regular setup. Yeah, I know. Huh? I, it's crazy. I I love it though. I mean, it's it's big. It's not echoey though. No, I don't think so. See, they they got us all mic'd up. We got it's pretty good. Mic. We're yeah. good. To, we're good to go. Thank you for being here. By the way, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, there will be a replay. Uh, if you get frozen, if you're here for the first time and it freezes, go ahead and click the red reconnect button on top. It will not take you out. It'll bring you right back. Ask questions. Introduce yourself. Ask questions. Tell us who you are. Are you a farmer, a grower, a processor, a chemist, an investor, an engineer, an entrepreneur? Who are you so we know and we can engage with you? We appreciate your questions. We, uh, oh, we really appreciate them. I mean, we go through those questions. Uh, you know, we oftentimes we put those back into some FAQs. Um, sometimes we answer them on later podcasts, depending on what, you, what you know. So if you got a question, even if it's not relevant and you have a question, put it in there. Don't and be afraid. Yeah, because, don't be afraid. We're, we're there. It's, it's anonymous. So if you think it's a stupid question, it's not. Somebody else has that question. So ask. Right. Um, we're going to be talking today about seed to sale, CBD processing software cannabis man manufacturing software, um, manufacturing efficiency systems, cannabis hemp software, and we're going to be even touching on the chain of custody. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yes, uh, all, quite a bit. All of that. Yes. And uh, there's, it, we, we are going to have a lot of fun. So, uh, no holds barred. Ask a lot of questions. Let us know. Make sure you explore our resources. Check on uh, our live tour, CBD jam sessions, extraction guides. A distillation guides, calculator library, we've got courses, more courses coming, and congratulations to Jonathan S. from Forest Lake, Minnesota. Sweet. He's been very active on our social media okay. uh, post. Uh, he won a care package, which includes a hat, stickers, and some other fun prizes. All right. I wonder what those other fun prizes are. I don't know. Maybe there's some products, you know? Product. Product, yeah. Product. Yeah. Jonathan, are you, are you stoked? <laughs> and it's Jonathan S. So we're 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 protecting your anonymity apparently, because it's Jonathan S. We don't always do that. So we're good. Okay. So in this episode, we got a lot to cover today. Seed to shelf processing software. This right. is kind of a continuation of what we did before, right? That's right. That's okay. right. Yeah. We. I mean, we we uh, we had we had one uh, episode where we just discussed uh, you know what your guys' needs were uh, related to seed to sale sale software. And uh, now we're just gonna go through only a small portion. It's kind of a high level overview of it, but uh, just suffice it to say that, um, you know, what's important is that you're taking the data in the right places with the right people and the right equipment, you know, to run your process. So that's, that's really what we're gonna talk about, how to really to re record all those events on an audit, kind of a paperless way, more automated than most. Better flow, less human error, yeah. everything. Right. This is this is necessary for chain of custody, right. and it'll help you all along the way. Right. So. I mean, I remember, um, you know, I've been in a lot of facilities, um, and you know, there's always, uh, given the example, there's always a um, some sort of clipboard or notebook that people are signing in, signing, signing, and I'm like, what? What is that? Oh, that, that's our cleaning record. Okay, so there it is in your notebook. It, wouldn't it be nice to have all of that? Um, you know, records of all the, the equipment that you're cleaning, the person who cleaned it, the date that they cleaned it, the, uh, you know, the, the cleaner that was used when you clean it. You can, you can just basically print a report out when people come and inspect. Yeah. So th those are, that's really what we're talking about here is really streamlining a lot of those operations so that they are executed from a simple software. Absolutely, and that's yeah. good. And, and just, we did put the bottles away yeah. before we went on. Yes, yes, so. we did. We put them all away. We started to uh, check in our scotch. Yeah. We waited all in for post-processing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's a post-show processing that we're going to have there. Um, so. It involves it involves a very distinct formulation. Yes. Yes. And it'll it, it'll be a post-show enjoyment of the. That's right. Uh, of the goods. Let's so say. let's basically let's let's um, let's get started in this. Okay. Um, because we got a lot to cover. Okay, okay so Go. you're on. I mean, I'm just a prop. Oh, all right. <laughs> Use me. <laughs> all right, so look, this this station here, 
um, is called the IGW station. Okay, it's uh, a lot of people ask us, well, what what is the IGW mean? Um, and uh, well, it, it, we originally thought, well, we'll make it Internet Gateway IGW, you know, yeah. or Integrated Work Solutions or whatever. So we we started to um, really come up with this concept of the IGW laboratory, and um, really what that is is um, we found out early on in the in our career and all of that that we were looking to you know really get a lot of the data record a lot of the data as you're doing the work sure. rather than you know going back and then trying to figure out what was happening and then um, you know tracking everything from the very beginning to the very end so that you could really print out a report that would show you where where everything is in process I love IGW lab right? yeah the things that it can do I right. know we're not going to get in that detail but it's pretty dang cool it is cool yeah so it's basically a seed to sale uh, software but it, you know essentially it's more of a starting at processing yep. and working all the way through to packaging and formulation so okay. you're basically you're checking the materials in you're checking all of the uh, products that are coming out and then you're tracking everything in between now um, let me kind of preface this in a couple different ways well first of all this is considered a, a manufacturing execution system so because with each stage it's giving you executed steps to follow it's giving you all your SOPs it's giving you, uh, you know, it's logging the waste, it's logging the inputs, it's logging the outputs, it's barcoding everything. So it's everything you do. It's not necessarily right execution. Right. It's not that kind. Of, yes. Just checking. It's, yes. It's everything that you do, <laughs> rather than execution. Uh, yeah. So that's the first. We totally the first a nerf gun. Right we did. There. We did. We did. So that's the first thing it is. The, yourself, the second thing that it is is that it really is a, a quality management system. Um, because it's it's really recording all of the quality events that are re required that to report on for each lot. So whether that's um, a whether that's your you know all of your recording all your MSDSs, whether that's recording you know who did what in the process, whether that's formulating a or printing out a manufacturing record, for sure. example, an MFR for for example a bottle of tinctures, a bunch bunch of tinctures or um, you know, even printing out a C of A report from the laboratory. This is this is a, a this is all a part of that. It all so comes right back. It here. all comes right to there. And and you know, quality insurance comes into this system. And what they do is they they release lots. They'll quarantine lots. They'll put holds on lots, depending on in process controls that are coming back to them. So that that that's um, so it is a really a good quality management system. And you can add in all the SOPs in there and also manage the events that happen with the SOPs. So suppose you're changing the SOPs rather than going back and um, you know, going through your, your process. Basically, you change your SOPs, you get an approval on those, and then you re-upload them into the system, and it's, it's what I like those are nice. most about the standard operating procedures that we can put in here is that that helps training. Right. I mean, you can just come in and it goes tick, tick, tick. This is what you do. When you're working this station, right. that, this is what you do. Right. These are your standard operating procedures, and you can't move to the next level until you check that box. Right. I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's, that's the um, quality side, the manufacturing execution side. The, the final step of this is really the um, analytical, you know, it pulling in all of the analytical side of this, which we call... Uh, you know, laboratory information management. Okay. So a lot of times what people have a hard time uh, integrating Limb. is limbs, limbs, limb systems. Limbs. Okay, <laughs> uh, they, they have a hard time integrating. For example, okay, um, suppose I have a lot and I'm, I'm bringing it into my system and I need to go, uh, you know, bring it to QC and have them test it and then wait, you know, three, oh. four days and then bring it back, have a quarantine in the middle. Sometimes you just need to make sure everything is continuously, um, you know, moving along, right? Yeah. And, Otherwise you're uh, losing money. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, but also it's hard to, to keep all that data kind of, you know, keep track of it. True. The other thing is to keep track of it in process. So if you're measuring your decarboxylation or if you're measuring potency, for example, in extraction or potency in, um, say, distillation, you can keep track of it that way. So you take a lot, you take a sample out of it, bring it to the lab. The lab 
um, brings up this IGW software, puts the results in there, and then it's attached to that lot. It's attached to that distillate. It's attached to everything. So it's beautiful that yeah, way. So nice. let's let's uh, let's get into this. This station right here is um, basically it's a it's a decarboxylation uh, station, um, and so you can have any one of these stations can be configured for any process you want. Gotcha. However, um, it's important to note that the scale, it really kind of goes with the station. So in this case, you can see this is a 500 pound scale right here. And the issue with that is, you know, obviously you wouldn't use a 500 pound scale for something in formulations, yep. right? Where there's, um, where there's, you know, yeah, it's good, 169 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't use that scale in formulations where you're measuring out a three kilogram small, small yeah. smaller small. stuff. So you can configure this uh, setup with any um, with any scale that you'd like. Um, usually, it comes with a scale that's integrated, and all the drivers and everything are integrated. It usually always comes with a barcode reader, of course, so that you can read uh, your your lots coming in and out of this system. And then it also comes with a barcode. Uh, you know, printer. printer, yes. So it's a very simple system. People can usually put these things together like themselves, but when you buy it with the software and the hardware package, we're helping you um, figure out which scale goes with which process, yep. and then we're configuring all of these for that particular process. And kind of connecting them. And connecting sure all the dots. You've got right. that chain of custody throughout and, the process. You know, I mean, the other thing is, is it's not necessarily um, a easy thing to get all the drivers to work together like a lot of people want to know okay can i use my own scales and stuff like that um it's actually difficult to make you know the drivers work together in the software and everything that's where a lot of people have problems uh implementing other systems other software it's systems like demolition derby. it's kind of like that <laughs> basically you know you're trying to get it all working together you're buying some yeah. you know and that's why scale that you found off of ebay and you're wondering why it doesn't work okay have somebody right boss, whomever get it installed for you when when we do that also we we uh, basically we calibrate them and we put all those calibration data into the igw software so um so just just to let you know so okay so let's kind of get started here um on the tour of the of the igw um first looking at the dashboard the dashboard is just a general look at what's happening in the facility um you know basically and this this by the way is a demo instance so it's it's only partially populated. We keep it, keep <clears throat> a lot of the data out of there so that we don't have to, for example, continuously you know update it and things like that. It gets too cluttered. So um, here you have uh, January, February. You can see it looks like there was a lot of production of crude. Here's the yields. You can configure this to calculate since you're measuring the weight in and the weight out. You can continuously measure the yield by, by process and. Uh, basically have a report on that sure. every day if you wanted to. It wouldn't, wouldn't make any difference. Okay. This is uh, shipped per month, so if you're actually shipping out of this system, uh, you would ship basically to an ERP or an MRP system, and then the MRP system would do the final shipping. But there would be, it's a way to relieve the inventory from this system. Products filled um, and then waste by process. So, this, so you're not shipping from here, so there's no data there. Yeah, right, exactly, right. exactly, yeah. You'd have to put the yeah. data in there. Yeah. People use these in a couple different ways, like from the very beginning as a receiving unit all the way through to shipping, you can do that with a shipping label and everything. Um, but most of the time it's integrated into a ERP or an MRP system, and you use a job number or a work number to integrate with that system. And um, usually um, the way the ERP works and the MRP works is you wanna have you want to control the inventory coming in and you want to control the inventory coming out and sometimes uh, one in the middle as well so you're checking in checking out from like vaults okay yeah. um, and that's how typically it's done so they're just measuring it in and out and then they relieve the inventory because that's the financial system of record right so this um, interfaces with those types of systems via either an api which can be customized or um, or just basically you can use a job number, job work number system, gotcha. which we which uh, we use here, a job number, work number system. Okay. So there's other data here. There's also inventory. Um, you can have inventory by, uh, by, by process. Here you have like waste by process. We put some data in there to show you what that looks like. 
So here's the waste by process by uh, unit time in kilograms. And then you have other events due and shipped uh, by orders or by customer. So this is just kind of a dashboard. The dashboard can be configured to be customized, just to let us know what you need for However customization. Yep. yep. Um, and then you can also, uh, obviously, you know, this week, this year, whatever, you can put a time frame on it. So um, right here up on the right hand side um, is where you have all your different um, you know, stages. processes yeah. and stages, right? So, and of course, even those can be configured. If you have, for example, don't do decarboxylation until after your extraction, you can, you can kind of, you know, move basically around. move it around, yeah. Uh, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna um, do a receiving event, okay? okay? And um, I'll kind of show you what that looks like, and then we'll do like a milling event and we'll kind of go into some of the uh, items related to sampling and analytical. And then I'm going to show you the document control manager and then also events related to training and people. Okay. So think about this. If you have all your facility and you have all your people, keeping them up on training and all the training records and everything and events associated with that, you can basically um, send out reports and manage that all in I IGW <clears throat> because a lot of times they are required for manufacturing records anyway. So, you know, for example, I should be trained on this particular SOP that's for this particular system on this, in using this equipment, I can show training records in the IGW and those are all attached to manufacturing batch record. It's pretty sweet. That's so awesome. it, it really um, makes a difference because, um, you know, you're able to really assign operators then to different, um, you know, functions. processes, yeah. right, exactly, in different functions, and they then can, um, you know, basically execute on those functions, showing that, hey, I look, I'm trained, I'm there, I'm ready to go. And you okay. can cross-train and cross-train. Cross-train, yes, That's exactly, awesome. exactly. So Good. here's here's a receiving station here. So I'm just going to go in. Now, the first thing you can see is um, I am, it's requiring that I log in, okay? So... Um, this case I will log in here and the reason this is just every time you do a new function you have to log in because now it knows that I have logged in it also sets a timer internally so when I'm running this process it's timing what I'm doing okay. and that's important that'll that'll show on the reports okay. um, you can get you can use that timing feature in a couple different ways one way you can use it is just to understand what's your actual work being done versus your non-value-added work, okay? Gotcha. There's always gonna be value-added work in your facility, but you can, you can kind of understand, you know, by, you know, by worker or by operator, for Absolutely. example, maybe some have more non-value-added time than others. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? You know, on the animal farm, some animals are more equal than others, I guess. <laughs> That's right. So, anyway, uh, well, so here we're gonna do... For us that, um, somebody asked me, how many people work here? And I said, about half of them. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, that happens. But that's not here. No, no. Here, no. You know, we got everybody working. All right, so here's what we got, guys. Um, receiving station, we're gonna add in a new receiving event, okay? Um, and then here is the uh, assign equipment to the process. So I'm gonna assign a receiving scale to that process. I'm, I, you okay. can put notes in there in case something was wrong with it or whatever, just a note. That note will be, if you do put a note in there, that will be attached to that piece of equipment. Forever. So Forever, yeah. So you can set up all kinds of notes on there. Wow. There's something wrong with it. It's asking you now to go to the next step in the process. You can see that I've assigned that equipment. Actually, um, it's only allowing me to re assign a receiving scale. Okay. That's because that piece of equipment is assigned to this particular operation okay um, if you have uh, extractors or whatever you can then assign extractors to your process you can assign utensils to your process you can assign people to your process but in this case it's only equipment so um, so there's only one so are you gonna make me drag one of those super sacks over here no nope, no <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, yeah <laughs> we're gonna thousand pounds <laughs> So this, uh, this right here is also uh, prepared equipment. So you can, you can now take and say, hey, look, uh, maybe a part of your process in your SOP is to do a spot check on the calibration okay. uh, or something like that. Um, you can calibrate it, you can confirm that. That's now written to the record that, hey, I calibrated the equipment. It, if I, I went about and I, it was part of my SOP to clean the pieces of equipment before I used it, 
you can now um, then go ahead and confirm that event and say, hey, look, I cleaned the equipment. Okay, and it, says, yeah. and it says equipment event is registered successfully. Now, nice. this is just to show, hey, look, I'm following the SOP, I'm cleaning it. It knows that I did it because I'm logged in with the sure. unique code. Yep. Um, so yeah, that makes it um, all that data integrity um, requirements from 21 CFR part 11. That's sure. the reason why you do that. So now I'm gonna press next. Um, and then you can add in vendors. Now, um, I'm gonna just, we just have a vendor here. Um, and then this is where the job number comes in. That's the job number. A lot of times maybe people get work order numbers from the MRP or from the accountants, they'll give you a work order number. Sure. Um, this is where that, that goes, okay. Now we're just gonna check in some flour, okay. Now just, suf uh, there's, just suffice it to say that you can also check in all your standards. You can check in your chemicals, yeah. you know, ethanol, isopropanol, okay. all of your excipients like MCT oils, all that stuff. You you will put in all of the, um, let's say all the expiration dates in there. You can, you can print off a report that says, here's all the chemicals in my facility and here's all the expiration dates oh, wow. and here's the location that they're in. So that's pretty sweet. So that it's kind of like, a, here's, where, here's where everything is. Um, here's a material form. In this case, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be checking in the cannabis flower. And then the, sometimes uh, people require um, on the manifest a, delivery uh, person. So you put in your delivery person there, what the receiving date, what the expiration date in the event that there is an expiration date for this. So I'm gonna just say, hey, this is a couple months from now. Um, and then species. So a lot of times, a lot of different uh, you know, operations will have different species and they wanna track their species all the way through into the, into the actual vial itself, which is the end product. Wow. This is the way you would do that in this case. So I've been here are accused some, of being an alternate species. Yes, yes, I've accused you of that. <laughs> <laughs> After a few scotches, yeah. <laughs> you? I'll, yeah, there, we'll leave out the expletives. <laughs> Where is our alien music? We don't have, we don't have alien music here. Uh, okay, so um, designator M or A. So this is required in some jurisdictions for medical versus adult use. Gotcha. So if, if you need it, very similar to whether or not is it organic or not. So okay. if you're an organic facility and you need to track versus organic all the way through to your end product, this would be the way to do that. Got it. Um, and also if you need to track medical versus non-medical or adult use within your facility, this would be the way to do it. Now, something when I say within your facility, what I mean is you can set up multiple facilities and run this with multiple facilities. Oh. So that's pretty sweet. That is you can sweet. run multiple operations within the facilities and you can roll up all the data by facility. It's pretty nice for like multi-state operations, multi-country operations. The database itself is, is held in an AWS database, Amazon uh, database. Everybody gets a specific instance with all the security associated with that. So it's a very secure, um, you know, secure server. So anything, if you use cloud-based services, uh, currently, this is this is this is your this is your game here. So, um, there's also a visual inspection event. A lot of this has to do with when you're receiving in materials. Sometimes uh, the requirement is that it's free from foreign matter and debris. Gotcha. Okay, so if you ha if you go and you do an, a general you know visual inspection and you find you know nails or you find uh, you know wrappers or gum wrappers or whatever. A lot, you'll find all kinds of things in there. In fact, I have a picture, which I should share with you, <laughs> of a big pile of stuff that they found. You know, oh over, over time, you, you start collecting these things. Oh so, yeah, a lot of things end up in the bags uh, of trim or in the bags of whatever sure. that you're getting, super sacks. So um, you can do a pass-fail on that, and it, it's do not going to do what anything. The, what to the, the most unusual thing is you found? I can't tell you. You can't? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> but... That's just the first thing that comes to my head. I was just trying to think of something else. Like a treasure, uh, huh? Oh, well, we found uh, like shell casings, a lot of shell casings, like, oh. you know, yeah. Okay. So that was, that was boss. That Maybe. was interesting. Yeah. Um, a lot of people use at the very beginning of the process, they'll use a, uh, like a wand, uh, sure. a metal detector wand. Just to see. Yeah, just to get see, yeah, get it out, yeah. And if they, if they detect something in there, then they'll say, they'll make note right here. Yeah. So here's the note, had, had, Foreign matter, and debris, and debris. Debris. <laughs> Had fern <and> debris. <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's pretty well, good, huh? Well spelled. I'm gonna I'm gonna fail it, and then ah. I'll press next. Okay. 
So that failing does nothing to it. It still automatically still goes good. from receiving to quarantine, no matter what. Doesn't okay. Matter. Okay. Um, you know, at that point in time, actually, depending on the SOP that you're following, uh, you can you can tell the operator at that point in time and set it up in the SOPs, which we have right here, yep. that at that point in time, you are to go get the quality assurance manager and you may want to reject the shipment at that, mo gotcha. at that moment, depending on what it is. Okay. Um, and the instances that you'd want to do that would be like if you have a lot of mold that you're detecting or something like that, then you want to reject the shipment and don't even let it in your facility. You open the sack and it's just fuzzy. Right. That would be bad. Now, there's always certificates that come. If you're buying it from a farmer, he's going to have the certificate attached to the to yep. the piece of uh, you know the bag or whatever. Yep. If you have a chemical that you're you're putting in there, then you will have an MSDS, which is a material safety data sheet. Um, or you'll have some other documentation. This is the place where you put that documentation in. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, put something in there and you add it. Now, what that means is that this certificate is attached okay. to the lot. Yep. So it knows right at the very beginning exactly what it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and press next now. So you can see it's bringing me through. Here's the information that I need. Here's a lot of information that I need. Here's the equipment that you did. You're, I'm doing it, it knows I'm doing it. It's timing me when I'm doing it. It's making me put the lot certifications in there. And now it's time to, to basically bring the stuff into the, into the um, software. I okay. might even be able to do this. I think so, yeah, because it's just <laughs> next, 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 next. You know, you can do it. I can do that. You can do it. Thank you. So um, what we typically, this is the, uh, this is a, oh, wow. a, a standard barrel. A full barrel. A full you barrel. It like it was nothing. Like this, yeah. It's completely <laughs> empty, okay? Um, and we use these yeah, sacks here simply for um, purposes of, of um, you know, keeping it, uh, you know, the dust and stuff out of here. But, free yeah. So what we're going to do is, uh, this is each container. What you want to do in your facility is you want to standardize all your containers. Okay. So your inputs and your outputs are standardized. Preferably they're color coded. So black barrels, blue barrles, green barrels, uh, just so visual management. Root beer barrels. Root beer barrels, yes. Uh, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> you got some good ones today. That's true, uh, sweet, okay, that's fine, okay. All right, so here we go. So this is a blue barrel and it has a container and it has the tear weight associated with the blue barrels already in there. Okay, um, You're not so make me get in the barrel, no, I'm not going to make you get into the barrel. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to select the container type, container profile. This is a blue barrel container profile, and then we're going to add we're going to add our stuff to it, whether it's whatever it is. You just press the print button here; it'll automatically put the materials uh, and the weight of those materials into this into this. Uh, in the software, mm -hmm. and basically I press save. At which time then it will make a barcode, yep. which you put on there. On the barrel. Okay. And it's done. Now, I have to say also, there's another way to get in all the equipment. You can, um, I'm going back to the very beginning. Remember when I logged in all that equipment? Yep. Um, you can also log in equipment just by scanning the barcodes. Okay, so that's one thing to do. So the equipment here, that equipment all has, it's all barcoded, okay? So you can do it that way as well. So basically, it knows that I installed that container um, and, and it's got a barcode on it, so. Um, your turn, your turn. What? Yeah. What am I doing? Okay, we're scanning you in, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we're scan you in. Okay, what's the, do we have a, uh, uh, no, we don't have a profile for you. How about a blue barrel? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're gonna do here. Yeah, okay. Put your barrel in there. Yeah, I don't think we do. <laughs> we're gonna print that out. Whoa, seventy-seven thousand grams, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna save that, and then. Um, so here you go. Oh, okay. he didn't put it on my forehead. I thought sure that was going on my forehead. <laughs> Am I, am I in quarantine now? Yeah, you're in quarantine. Okay. We're, don't worry, we'll check you out. Come okay. on out here. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that same operation a couple more times. A lot of times what people have is like, like they'll come in with like 30 bags or something. Sure. Okay. And you want to have one profile 
for, for that bag. So you can you can actually put that profile in there, monitor it, and just just continuously weigh, yep. press weigh, press uh, print weigh. Keep going. You know, back and forth. Okay. And that that way you're really it can be able from to the same manufacturer. Yes. Or the same batch. Right. Same exactly. Everything, so the, all of these ways. containers are from the same lot. Got it. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in a couple more mean of these. Me and the blue barrel are brothers or something? Uh, I think so. Your your barrel brothers. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay, that is whatever. So you can see here. Now we have all of these containers here, okay. and I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to close the lot. Now what happens is it, it tells you everything that you just did here. What you brought in, all of the where it is, it's on the receiving dock, what the transaction IDs are, whether you've sampled it or not, what the container weights were, and I can download a receipt, which is pretty nice. Here's the receipt, and it has all of that. So people who are um, looking at the, you know, basically, um, you know, doing a paper-based system yep. uh, in addition to online. Look at uh, that. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's pretty it's sweet. It's like instantaneous. It is nice. So you, it's got all the information on there. Here's here's the receiving record. Here's the licensing record. Here's the uh, lot description. What exactly what it is. Here's a barcode for all of the lots that we put in. So I am now from this. For, for you Apple, are. I am a cannabis flower. You are. Blue you are container ID fourteen ninety two. Oh, with a barcode of 9412057. 9420157. No, 9415535. Wait, the, that, oh. you're that one. Oh, I'm nah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> you're this one right here. That's pretty sweet. So let, let, let's actually get. Dot, 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 535. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get you out of quarantine here. We're going to scan you. Woo! Okay, here we go. I'm free! <laughs> no, no, not yet. Oh, not yet. What? Yeah, see, it says you're, you're locked up. So uh, we can we can take an uh, I can I can uh, take you out of quarantine, which would be 1491, okay. and I'm going to release you. So this would be done by a um, a quality assurance person. I have permissions for demo purposes uh, that allow me to move things in and out of quarantine, yeah. in and out of hold positions, and things like that. But normally, I would have to have the right credentials in order to change it up okay. and and change that. Um, also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of these. I'm going to actually take them all out of quarantine so I can put them into the milling station. And then I'm going to move them to the milling station. Here they are. I'm going to move them. Uh, this doesn't bode well. For me. You're going to the... <laughs> we, have a, we, have a, we, have a, we have a chipper. A chipper. We're pretty close to no Fargo. Problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah, we are pretty close to Fargo. Okay. okay. So there they are. And so now they're all released. Um, if I wanted to take and um, as a part of the SOP, if I wanted to take and do a sampling event, yeah. I think this is normally where that would happen, right, right here. So let me show you how to do that. I, no. <laughs> Pound of flesh. <laughs> 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 this is gonna hurt only a little. This is gonna hurt you more, a lot more than it's gonna hurt me. Okay, um, let's talk about sampling. <laughs> so um, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna you do sampling. Manufacturing execution was so, so much fun. <laughs> fun so here we're gonna go to sampling. You know, every time I demo this, that's what people love the most is just all of the processes. Yep. That's what that's what they want to know is where it is. Right. And you know what's really cool about this also, if you have, like, if you're taking up, you know, maybe. We, at the facility here, we do hundreds of samples. Those will all be sitting here. You can go back and you can you can look at it. Okay, we they'll disappear from this list here um, when they when the analytical is done on them. Sure. So let's let's show you what that looks like. So I'm going to add in a sampling event here. Um, and usually, what you would do is you'd have um, different sampling equipment. Um, like a 30 kg scale or something like that. I don't have one of those right here, mm -hmm. but just suffice it to say that, hey, look, uh, you, you would use a different piece of equipment. You wouldn't sample with this scale. No, it's too big. It's too big, right? So you need, you're gonna take like a five gram sample or something like that, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the process here. I'm gonna confirm that I cleaned it and also I'm gonna confirm that um, I calibrated it. You can see what I'm talking about now about 
you know, um, all the quality things that, sh that people are interested in um, measuring from a standpoint of quality, like calibration events, training events, cleaning events, all that stuff. And you can have any event you want. You can, there's an infinite number. You can just put them in there. Wow. Whether you just did performance, uh, PM, OQ, IQ, that all can be put in there. Whether it was repaired, refurbished. So if, it, if it's gone into quarantine, the equipment now I'm talking yeah, about. Sure. Okay, whether it was repaired, brought out of service, in service, all that stuff. You can, you can bring that out. Because it's the itself that we're talking about. Exactly, yeah. So here's a scanning a container. In fact, I'll, I'll scan you. Come in. Okay, there you are. You need, you need a sample. <laughs> and, and then I'm going to take the, take the, uh, Oh, gallon jar. That's pressure right there. <laughs> yeah. I think your finger should fit in there. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Here we go. Uh, let's do this. Sometimes you can get, um, sometimes the, the, the there's, there'll be a lot of container profiles. Okay. So sure. you want to make sure that they're, um, they're kind of, you, once the operator knows where they are, they just scrolls right to it, right? Right. So um, this is a tube, and this is tear weight of six. And uh, the weight, so we're going to put in maybe 50 grams in there. Um, and then I'll, I'll send the report to me. So it's asking me where to send the report. And then it's going to ask me to select methods. So with this particular method, I want to be able to... I want to be able to do a residual solvents test because I smelled some ethanol on it. Um, I want to. <laughs> yeah, well, we did. We that, did imbibe before just before the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. To make it take a breathalyzer. Are you going to? Am I going to go back into quarantine? Uh, yeah, I think so. Microbiological test. Okay. So you can add in all kinds of tests. In fact, this this list uh, can also be changed for whatever list that you you would like. Okay. Um, so. We're gonna select that all. I wanna be the French biomass. Um, can't do it, can't what? do it. No, 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 you're, you're Norwegian, <laughs> so sorry. It says French biomass in there. <laughs> okay, special, te <laughs> special test instructions, make sure this is done immediately. It should also here have a station, so I am now in the, um, where am I at? I'm in the milling room, milling. right? Yeah, milling. it's got a timestamp on there. I'm about to get Look at that, down. so this is really awesome. I'm taking a sample, it knows the time I took the sample. Yeah. You can see right here, there's the SOP, which should be here, which you, I can add to this and say, sure. hey, here's the SOP. I yeah. can also add any number of executed instructions, yeah. one through 100 if I want to. Um, and so I'm running those, and I'm gonna press save. Don't let sample 1491 run away. That's right. That's what I'm hearing. So here it goes. This sample ID then really goes on to this jar. So that goes, that, and that's me. That's you. It's part of me. Okay, now, that was a real tough time. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna be pretty. <laughs> okay, okay, download receipt. So here we go, we got a receipt. Look at this, it's pretty freaking sweet. It is. It, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna press. Everything's uh, there. Everything's here. Everything. What I sampled, I sampled you, here's the input container. You can see right here. Yeah. That was you. Yeah. And here's the sample container. Yeah. And I put 50 grams of me in there. In there, yeah. yeah. And then here's the executed instructions. Here's the SOP documents. There's no SOP documents in there because I did not assign any SOP document to this station. 50 grams would be about a finger. And that's about right, I think. Right. I'm get it right at the knuckle. <laughs> this is like a, you know. Um, the yeah. First knuckle, maybe. And then there's the test methods that are required. You can see the test methods here. So here's all the test methods. Okay, so I'm gonna print that out. So this sample then goes to the analytical laboratory. Look at all that data. And basically you just, you just they are gonna go there. Do you know They're gonna do this. Do you know how long it somebody to do that with a clipboard? Yeah, it would be, it would be a, lot, a lot of data. There's a lot um, of data. So they would scan it in here. Okay. And let me show you a little bit about what that looks like here since we're, we're digressing away from our milling operation. I'm gonna to go to analytical. And of course, I'm gonna log in here. So, oh, there it is. Look at that. Sweet. See, it, it knows that I did it two minutes ago. It's got the run ID sample. It knows, it knows exactly what te test methods I w I'm required Beautiful. to run. I'm an analyst. I'm uh, an analyst now. I'm looking at this. 
and uh, basically I'm gonna so go ahead and modify it. So this went over to the test lab, yep. right? Yep, this went over to the test lab. And it's there, and that's what they get, and, that's what they see. Right, and then I'm checking it in. Now in and now I'm gonna do like an HPLC test on it, and I'm gonna select that. Go. I'm gonna tell them it's calibrated. I calibrated it this morning. Um, and I'm going to tell you I cleaned it and I because I cleaned it this morning. You can put some notes in there if you want to put something related to you know what your calibration sure. is. You can put that in there. And then here's your here's your next here's a retrieval. Um, and uh, basically you're you're running your test now. So you re oh this is where you retrieve your sample. So um, I'm going to press next, which it already knows I retrieved it because I opened that up. And then um, and then here's the test results. So this is where you put in your test results. You can define a range based on your input for any part of the process. So like, for example, I would have decarboxylation test for HPLC. Sure. I would have a maximum on CBDA or THCA and a, a minimum on THC and CBD. And it would only be four because I only care about four sure. species there, right? Yeah. As opposed to um, you know, when I started out, like in receiving, I'm going to want to know the full cannabinoid profile, okay? So you can change your different tests for different profiles. Does that make sense? Got it. And you can do the same thing with pesticides. You can do the same thing with microbiologicals. You can do whatever. So um, in this case, we're just going to kind of put in some result in there. When you set the test up, though, you can set an acceptable range, okay? And what that means then is um Whoa. is like say you suppose you're out of range right yeah. it'll flag it in the system as being out of range qc looks at it flags it rejects it sends it back to quarantine okay. so yeah okay. so that's typically what happens okay. and you usually you're doing a test prior to getting out of quarantine and so what'll happen basically is qc qa will have a list of the lots that she needs to go or, or he needs to go take out a quarantine. Yep. They'll click on it, they'll look up the test. Does it pass or fail? If it passes, it's exited from quarantine. If not, then it stays in quarantine. Gotcha. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that all. This is a document. So again, you can select any uh, document you'd like to add to the file, whether it's an MSDS, or if you have a specific chromatogram, oh. which is basically, you know, the, 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 the printout. Yeah. Especially when they're in color. The they're PDF, color. right? So if you need a PDF, it'll we get a PDF. A lot of we do. Last, the, the podcast that we did last time. We did. Yeah. So then there's the document. So any kind of chromatogram or any instrumentation specific thing. A lot of people ask us, okay, um, can you can you add can you like add and put the data directly from the analytical instrument into IGW? Yeah. And we we didn't feel the need to do that because. Um, you know, essentially, that's what that's uh, that's that's what the data system is for for the HPLC. So it's there. It's got all the data integrity items in it, okay. um, and so you know a lot of people are worried about data integrity, um, and it's going to put out a report. That report should be signed by the analyst and then attached here. Got it. Uh, we didn't get into all the details related to you know actually taking the bits uh, that are coming off of the HPLC and putting them into the system. It's not what the system is for. Okay. But all your SOPs here can be here, uh, and then you end the process. So you end the process here, and then you can download a receipt. So this is the process here, and you can download a, a certificate of analysis from this, whether it passed or failed. Let's do that, see what it looks like. So there's a certificate of analysis, pretty simple. It's simplified from a lot of what you guys normally would see. But if you have, um, you know, for example, all your pesticides on here, if you have your, all your microbiologicals on there, all that stuff, it would show you whether or not it, when it got certified, what the C of A was, and that would be there for, along with a barcode and everything, everything. For, for, your, um, Connected. Got it. for your people to take a look at. Here's a download a receipt. So if you need a receipt from your analytical process, you can see here I ran this input container. Here's the sample container. Here's what it was. Here's the test test methods that I have, and it, it, I'm running it. So there it is. There's the receipt. Nice. I I I like that flow. That test. And when it goes back to testing, if you can test potency, it keeps your process going and moving. Right. Right. Otherwise, you got to do that. It takes days. Right. 
Yeah, and you can suspend any process right in the middle of the process. You can restart it. You can go back and you can modify anything because a lot of times what you'll do is you'll you'll set it up so that okay I'm going to run 30 samples uh, for HPLC and I get them all prepared yep. and then I run them overnight okay. and then you know so that's a suspended and maybe I'll do um, half of the microbiological samples the next day and then the next day I'll do pesticides so maybe three days or two days to get them all done but you can suspend the process and then modify it add the results to it and redo the certificate of analysis. Once that's done, um, it'll show up as being done by the okay. to QC. So, okay. and then also that email that I put in the sampling station, I get an email back saying, "Hey, your analysis is done." Done. So that's pretty sweet. Okay. Then yeah. you can move on. Yeah. So I kind of went over that. We kind of went down that rabbit hole, but it's a it's a major portion of you know keeping it all straight. Yes. Like you have a lot coming in, and now you're you're converting it into thirty different products essentially whether that be a bulk product or an sure. end product sure. and you want to make sure that all your analytical results are attached to those at each stage that's pretty in, it's in, yeah it's awesome. a lot of data to manage and so this is a really great it's way to all, attach all the data now in this system is it all stored on board the computer is it stored in the cloud where is it's it? all in the cloud it's all so in the cloud it's all in the cloud and you just get a login number you get an instance Yay, <laughs> floating. Okay, so here we are. Um, okay, so we're gonna go back here to this. We're gonna, oh, I think we should log some waste. Okay. Okay, so uh, not, we didn't get all that finger. We had to, some spillage on the floor. <laughs> okay. So we gotta log some waste. Um, what you do is essentially uh, you, what I like to do is I like to have this Okay, and then people clean up at the end of the day or they'll clean up at the end of a lot. Sure. And inevitably there's stuff on the floor, okay? Yeah. A lot of times, um, some of it is, there shouldn't be dirt on the floor, but sometimes there's spillage out of the bags and stuff like that. Sure. And you want to take and you want to claim that as waste because you just spent all that time logging it in and you want to claim it as waste and you want to attach it to the lot, right? Got it. So in this case, what I would do is I'd scan one of these Oh, scan the container. There it is. It's coming up, and it's asking me to scan in the waste. Uh, and usually, what I'd have is a, a bucket or a, a barrel or something that was designated as a waste container, and I put all my waste in there. In this case, we can basically make a container, or I can scan in the container. I'll make a blue barrel, and I'll put in um, I'll put in a bunch of waste in there, and then we'll register it. Do we want to register it to the lot or the, to the container? So. The question is, do you want to say, okay, hey, this specific container, I want to make sure that I track this separately, that that container itself had a lot of waste in it. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So that the instance that you'd use that is if it came back and it was almost all sticks. Yeah. And there was nothing in it. So just that container would be all waste, essentially. Gotcha. Or if you want to assign it to the lot, you can do it by lot. Okay. Um, and then there's different spillage, there's different reasons for waste. And you can configure these so you know there's different categories it's spillage or it's process waste or maybe it's the water that's coming out or the sticks and stems or whatever you can you can basically um, you know assign what the waste reason is and then also what your waste method is a lot of times people will want to know okay what did you do with all that waste where is it this is for um, purposes of preventing diversion you know like oh i just threw a bunch of stuff on the floor and now I'm going to pick it up, put it in the waste bucket. And I keep on doing that. You know that old Johnny Cash song? Got a one piece at a time. <laughs> I got my dope one ounce at a time. Just dropping it on the floor, bringing it out in the trash and then harvesting it there. Okay. So a lot of times what people want to do is, um, you know, if you track all this stuff over time, you'll be able to see um, just with data analysis, okay, that particular guy always has a lot more waste than everybody else. Yeah. You That's important bench, to know. It's a, you, it's a good benchmark. And really, the only way to deal with that is by trending. Yeah. But also, uh, you would also give a waste method, okay? And um, the method could be compost or it could be, sure. you know, manifest, you manifesting the waste, self haul, waste hauler. Sure. Um, your chemical waste can be manifested this way too. You know, all your chemicals coming in, okay. being, being used, and then coming out, being manifested uh, into waste into a barrel, you'd, you would basically get mass balance that way. Go on. Okay. Yeah.
That's good tracking. Yeah, it's pretty good tracking. So I'm going to log that to waste. This barcode here then goes onto the waste container. Okay. Okay, so this is a specific waste container. If this if this waste container already existed, all I would have done at the very beginning is scan that container. And it there it's coming up. So I can continuously add to it. Uh, so you you would have cumulative amounts of waste then, then added to that container. Or and you just reweigh it and reweigh it and reweigh it and reweigh it. So gotcha. it'd be cumulative container. So okay. all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna update the log waste. Okay, and it says that it's been updated. Okay, so let me see here. I have equipment. Um, let me let me show you where we put in all the equipment. Here's we can put any piece of equipment that we'd like and assign it to any any place in the whole facility. So oh. distillation equipment, you can put it in different process stages. What the serial numbers are, what the calibration period is, it will give you a. Um, it'll analyze those calibration periods. And actually, uh, you can write a report saying, hey, here's all the equipment in my facility that needs to be calibrated. Wow. Or here's all the equipment in my facility that needs to be cleaned because of it, it's out of the cleaning interval. Gotcha. Okay. Or, he, you know, here's all the equipment in my facility via serial number. So that, that's pretty sweet. And you can put dates and particular time and when it needs right. to be done and everything. Preventative maintenance. You can log preventive maintenance on that. So that, that's nice. what that looks like. I'll give you an example in the settings here. You can see that we probably we have a lot of equipment in there. Let me see here. Oh yeah, manage equipment. So let's go into manage. There's all of our equipment there that we put in there, along with the description, what it does, and if you go in here, let's say this analytical scale here. We're going to update it. So there's different different things that you can update on that, and you can also update the. Um, the all of the settings so hang on just a second here locations packaging manage the equipment i don't know where oh here i gotta do it right here so here i'll, I'll give you an example we'll scan in this piece of equipment here here we go so this is the equipment documentation okay that's pretty freaking sweet um, you can assign it to different people so that these these are the people right here who have been trained on that piece of equipment. Okay. You can, here's the certification, upload certificates so that that would be, for example, your calibration certificates sure. would all be, and then if you need to register a new event, you know, I'm, I calibrated it, I'm gonna register that, take an action note, register the event. That registration now is attached to that. And it also knows that these certain people are authorized to use that piece of equipment. You can also, um, you know, attach files like, um, you know, user manuals and all that stuff. And you can also assign users to that piece of equipment. Okay. So it's pretty sweet. And then you can see here, look at all, this is all the past actions that have been taken with that piece of equipment. Inspections, calibrations, yeah. cleanings. Right. Download the PDF. So That's you have good. a full record as to what has happening with your equipment. All of that is analogous to people. So a full record as to what is going on with your people. So whether they were trained, what, you know, what, we how they were this. trained. When we're doing full good manufacturing practices. Yeah, absolutely. GMP, this is required. Yeah. Our ISO certification, this is required. I mean, this right. is this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, also for organic, for example. Oh, yeah. So you need all that information when they come to audit you. They're going to want to see, okay, what what is the equipment that you used? You know, and um, what are your SOPs to keep them separate? Exactly. From else? Exactly. Yep. So and how are you using that in your process? Okay. Um, so here's the same thing exactly with the documents here. This is the document manager. Yep. Here we just have a couple documents put in there, but here here's one document. This is uh, this is the inspection and inspection receiving inspection SOP. Okay, there it is right there. Um, I can go in there and I can say, oh, okay, here's that SOP. Here's what it is. I can upload other documents associated with that SOP. Sure. And they'll all be on and they'll all be in that uh, in that record in that record and then also assigned to the document location. So which means that when you pull up your receiving station, all the documents are there. Wow. The MSDSs if you need them, um, the re you know, uh, document stages. So I can, for example, with this one, I can take a facility, I can add the facility in there, I can assign this one to the milling room as well. And I can uh, assign this one to the milling room as well. I can add in a document, say the 
something associated everything with that. Everything we're doing here is for that scale. Yes, exactly. No, no, this this is a document. Oh, this is the document yeah. around that. Yeah. So the, all your SOPs, all yeah, your MSDSs, sure. and okay. anything that needs to be updated or whatever. But it's, so. It, it, what, so, but is this the documentation for that scale or just for these rooms? You would update, you would attach that to the equipment. And the Yeah, and yeah. The this is just for um, the documents for that particular, for, for SOPs gotcha. and things like that. So okay. any type of changes, you need okay. to be able to show, hey, look, here's my change records, okay. right? Here's yeah. what I was using three months ago. I'm not using that same SOP, but here it all is. Here's my whole record of everything, all Got the it. changes that were made and everything. Okay. So um, so let's, let's kind of go into real quick here. Um, I know there's a lot here left to do, but I'm gonna, I promised a milling event, so we're gonna go in there and look at the milling event. Um, oops. So I typed in the wrong password. It didn't allow me to go in there. That's good. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good sign. It um, means it's working. Yeah, it means it's working. So it, this stuff right now, I, th I think we assigned that to milling, right? Okay. So yes. what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, basically we're gonna start a new milling process here. And uh, we're gonna mill with Big Red, which is one of our pieces of equipment. Um, we're just gonna confirm um, some piece of equipment, um, and then we're gonna scan the container to process in this batch. So here we go. We scan that first container. Here's the container record. So everything was associated, the history of that container, when the, what the weight in was, what the select was, what the, what the material is, and what the grams are. It's Awesome. You press next. So this, it says, here's your input container, 1490, and we start milling, right? Got it. Okay, now we need to log an output container, meaning now we're, we filled up an output container and we need to assign a barcode to it and weigh it, right? Well, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna log an output container. This is a new output container. We're gonna use a blue barrel, for example. Um, and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna weigh it out. Now, um, this is where, I'm gonna put in, yeah. So this is, oh, material ID required. Oh, you know, yeah, okay. So it's making it's making sure here's cannabis milled. So we're taking cannabis flour and bringing that in a cannabis milled. milled, right, right. Yep. And it says, hey, you can, oh, hey, you got you have to put that in there. It's pretty sweet. So it so it, is that it the saved hey, me. Is that the hey dummy button? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Executed instructions and then SOPs are there. So I'm gonna press save. Okay, so then this barcode here then goes on to that output container. Got it. Yeah. And then you just keep doing that until your input containers are all filled. You can have multiple inputs, you can have multiple outputs. Gotcha. Many to one, one to many, it doesn't really matter. Be because it's all tracked. Because it's all tracked, right. So if I wanted to do another, I press output. And so now it thinks that basically I had this input container and I milled it everything and I put it all into the uh, output container, Got okay? It. Um, if there's some waste, I can now log my waste the exact same way I did before. Sure. And then here it's got process parameters. These are configurable um, by station. And like, for example, um, if, there's, if there's a lot of seed in, in one particular batch of hemp, a lot of times we take the seed out and we weigh that seed. We say, okay, what's the kind of grams of seed? Um, downstream, you may want temperature, pressure, process parameters, whatever. Wow. You can put those in there and it'll log it for every event that you do. Okay. So anything that you want to have tracked as a part of the process and by the operator, you put that in there and you can, pro you can track it as a part of the process. Pretty sweet. Um, and that includes like job number. So if you have a job number uh, as per you know, the MRP or the ERP system, you can put that in there too and track it. And all of these reports are in the system. We took, well, you showed us that uh, at the outset right. earlier on, and you can access this all the time. Right. So I'm gonna end the process. It says, you, you can see here, I got, it's telling me, here's the, the flow of work. I'm gonna retrie retrieving the document, reviewing it, adding equipment, updating the process, defining your output containers, you log the waste, and then you end the process. Got it. So I'm gonna end the process here. It says, I'm gonna end the process right here. Now it's, it's gonna ask me, is that input container empty? Okay, and it's not because I didn't put enough, I didn't put enough kilograms in it. So it's, it's wondering, okay, where is that extra material? 
Yeah. Right? What did you do? What did you do with it? You're not logging any waste. Um, it's not empty. And so what, what's going on? So, um, and, your, and your pockets are bulging. Yes. <laughs> That's where it's going to ask you, hey, to re-weigh, re-weigh it. Okay. So I'm going to put another 3,000 in there, something like that, and I'm going to confirm it. Okay. This is where if, if things are getting screwed around with uh, by the operator, and things are kind of weird, this is a it's, gonna, it's gonna show up in the database. Because you you, you're gonna be able to see, okay, well, why are these numbers not adding up? Why are they not, you know, why is the total outputs, you know, double yeah. what we have input? Where, where did the rest of the stuff go? When you force your, everybody to go through that process, it's really tight, gotcha. super tight. So um, I'm gonna end this process and I'm gonna end it all. I'm just gonna say that the container's empty. I'm gonna press end here. Okay, so the process has ended. Now, it recorded two contradictory things there. Yes, it did. Okay, that, that will be flagged by the data analysis portion of this. Okay. Okay, it's not saying, it's not dis disabling it, it's saying that you can't do that, but it's flagged for purposes of, hey, there's something going on here, you yeah. need to go back and check what it. What does this so, mean? It's um, empty, but there's 3,000 grams. A lot of people would, will use like Power BI yeah. to go into the database and and kind of look at, okay, what are the events, what are the weird events that are happening? Gotcha. So if you're trying to understand what happened to that missing a 20 kilograms of distillate that you thought you had in your inventory but no, don't no longer have, yeah. okay, that's this is the kind of thing that can help you figure out where things are and what was Dr. happening. John took it for a podcast. That's what it was. <laughs> and I did that one time. You did. <laughs> you remember, there was a lot of scrambling going on. What so download the receipt again <laughs> from that process. Here's the milling station and there's the receipt for it. So it knows that I took that input container and there's the output container. It knows that I used this equipment. It knows that I was in there. Um, it also has a dirt total duration of five minutes. Wow. Yeah. So it's got that value added time in there along with the executed instructions, the SOPs that were there and then whether or not. So and you know if something needed to take five minutes but they logged it in and it took them 45 minutes. Right problem right exactly so there's a lot of things we didn't cover in here there's a formulation station in here that allows you to create formulations there's a packaging station that will allow you to package up up goods and and really the formulation station is really where you get into your manufacturing batch record there's a full batch record system in here you'll be creating the manufacturing batch record directly from this uh, this piece of software wow. um, so laboratory information quality system, manufacturing batch records, uh, all the quality data that you need, and then also uh, manufacturing execution. It's taking you through the different steps. That really um, is really powerful as you go into the formulation station where you have a bill of materials and you're checking it off. You, okay, how much did you put in? Check. How much did you put? Uh, uh, how much of this? Check, 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 you know, and you can have it set up so that multiple people can check off on it too, if you'd like. Okay. Some people like to have that. So, um, so that's just a really, uh, really high, really? high level overview. Yeah, and this and we really took a micro shot yeah. of just receiving and milling. We didn't go into yeah, we didn't go into reports. But this goes all the way all from receiving stuff. all the way through milling, grinding, all the way through to shipping. You know, you go from. You know, formulations we have two grinding stations then we've got the extraction right filtering dewaxing right. winterization and then you've got a solvent removal right. station i mean everything's in here it's right. built in right distillation isolate right. and even chromatography boom and right. then you've got the analytics that go all the way through right as well as all the way to packaging right that's brilliant so so for customers who get this typically they'll get they'll get some of these workstations, yep. okay? They'll put them at different areas in the facility, um, and then they use um, the software um, to log in and log out as a, here's the station, here it is, it's the infrastructure, it's here. Okay, I'm logging my stuff in and out, and, um, and then that way they can get reports. Yep. Um, and, and that way can, they can also flag, you know, occurrences that are, you know, kind of questionable. They can understand what's going on uh, in their system, where, where, for example, if I have a lot, 10,000 pounds comes in, where, where is it in my facility? I can say, I can tell you, okay, uh, 30 kilos is in distillate, 70 kilos is in isolate, 
um, 60 kilos are still in crude and uh, you still have uh, 150 pounds left in your or in flour. You know where all your whip you is. You know where all of it is. Yeah, you, where every piece of inventory. You know That's every, awesome. yeah, you know every and analysis will, is done. You can know all that stuff. This yeah. will also integrate um, if you want, if you want to code the API into right. an accounting system. Separate, Absolutely. And a separate ERP or quality system. Even though this has a lot of that built in, Yeah. you can take it and put it in whatever you're working on. Right. A lot of people ask the question about the API. You can see here on the screen, there's there's the whole API is there. So um, a lot of people really like that because they have everything they need really to function. Um, That's you awesome. Know, yeah, so. Easy peasy. All right, this is good. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. did good. Thank you for being here. Thank this you. This is good. Uh, seed to sale CBD processing software. That's what we did. Uh, we, you know, it's the cannabis, and this is geared specifically for our industry. Right. The hemp and cannabis industry. Right. Um, cannabis manufacturing software, cannabis hemp software, and, and this really uh, gets you through the chain of custody. We talked about the certificates of analysis right. and everything, all, all the way through. Thank you for being here. Ask your questions. Um, they're there. We, you know, our team has been hopefully answering all of your questions because we're kind of in the lab here, so, so we, we didn't do that. Um, check out, keep asking questions, stay on, stay tuned next week. We, and look at our live tour, CBD Jam Session, Advanced Extraction Guide, Calculators, etc. cetera. Um, participate in our social media, subscribe to our YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, check out our calculator library. That's very, very cool. We've got more courses coming. Yeah. Uh, which, is, which is awesome. Live tours. And the live, we'll do live tours. Yeah. And scope like, on our Like pod. literally, literally, you get on the phone, we have one phone, you have another phone, we're going, you know, so yeah. basically scope out our bot, Sign up for our live tours. Um, you know, what, we would like to ask you some questions about what your what your goals are. Obviously, um, you know, with well, the important. tour, we need and, some detailed yeah. information so that we can show you the right stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but we can show you all that. That's awesome. And again, thank you uh, and congratulations to Jonathan S. Yeah, uh, from Forest Lake, Minnesota, uh, for getting his package. And thank you for being here. We'll see you next time. See ya. All right. Thank Bye. you. Well done.